Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Miravalli. I'm coming to you, my friends, on Spy Wednesday, the day that the church remembers the infamous betrayal of Jesus by Judas. You know, it's sometimes said that if you want to further insult someone, you don't insult just them, you insult their mother. Well, today, I have to announce to many of you uh, who perhaps do not yet know of arguably the most blasphemous film, major movie ever produced against our sweet mother, against Our Lady. And this movie is called The Unholy. This movie will be released in movie theaters throughout the country and even in Europe on Good Friday. No accident there. What's the nature of the movie? Well, so far we have only the trailer and the summation. And some might be quick to comment, well, how can you condemn a movie when you haven't seen it yet? Well, in the same way that, analogously, if I watched 10 minutes of porn uh, and the, the film was identified as a porn movie, I don't have to watch two hours of the porn. I know it's porn. I know it's evil. I know it's cancerous. Uh, or... If the bottle says it's poison, if it advertises itself as poison, uh, you don't need to drink a pint. You can taste a tablespoon, if, if one wants even further empirical evidence, to know it's poison. The trailer of The Unholy is poison. It manifests a gross sacrilege, gross blasphemy to Our Lady. So let me give a brief summation of it as it's contained in the, ta in the uh, trailer, but also in the plot summary. So essentially, uh, a young girl in the New England area receives a healing, supposedly from Our Lady. And then the girl begins to heal many other people, and she's calling them to come to Mary, to give your souls to Mary, which of course is a type of marrying consecration, right? And as this continues, and there's a national and even potentially international following happens, in the midst of the phenomenon, it's clear that it's not Mary, it's Satan. And that all the souls who gave themselves to Mary really gave themselves to Satan. Now, and of course it is a total undermining of authentic Marian apparitions. In fact, the caption under an image of Our Lady says, quote, be careful who you pray to. And then it proceeds to be a horror film about the horrors of what happens because people gave themselves to who they thought was Our Lady, but it was really Satan. My friends, if, if someone wanted to manipulate by film individuals so that they would doubt Marian consecration, so they would doubt Marian apparitions, so they would have emotional psychological memories of seeing a statue of Our Lady and then watching demons break out of the statue, which happens also with the crucifix. You couldn't do a better job than this blasphemous film. So it's being released on Good Friday, uh, there's theaters, again, throughout the country. So I beg you, in the name of our sweet mother, first of all, obviously, do not give in to the human curiosity to see this. That is to financially support this blasphemy. Satan always uses curiosity to lead us into sin. Well, here's a, here's a classic example. Well, I, I'd like to see the film. What if it was your mother? What if they made a movie about demons coming out of your mother and defiling you and your family because they defiled your mother? Well, that's what's happening. It's a defiling of the mother of God. The sweet, immaculate, co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all graces is being defiled on Good Friday. So first of all, we are called to, of course, fast from the movie and encourage others to fast from the movie just out of a fundamental respect for Christianity and the fact that Christianity does accept that Jesus came to us through Mary, let alone the Lourdes, the Fatimas, the Medjugorjes, the apparitions which have happened throughout the world that have led so many to the faith. 
Number two, I ask you at least, please, consider praying at least one rosary directly in reparation to, first of all, our mother's heart. My gosh, God, Jesus gave us this mother from Calvary, and she's been loving us and interceding for us and suffering with us from that moment, from the moment of Calvary. The mother Jesus has given to us has done all that for us and still so many of her children. And let's pray it's out of ignorance. We don't want to ever give bad intention, but so many of her children reject her. And now straight up blasphemy on Good Friday. And so please, please pray pray at least one rosary in reparation to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and in mitigation of the damage that this horrific film will produce. You know, it's interesting. 20 years ago, they wouldn't they wouldn't even try this. Hollywood wouldn't, wouldn't try this. Why? Because it would be a flop. People wouldn't dare to watch something so blasphemous. But what we're experiencing, my friends, what we're experiencing is a new public proclaiming of Satan. And that's in many different venues. For example, there is now the Satan shoes, which uh, have satanic symbols all over them. Uh, they're being sold for $1,000, $1,100 a pair. There's only 666 pairs to start with. And each shoe is guaranteed to have human blood in the shoe. My friends, this is straight up in-your-face diabolical activity. And so, should we fear this? Should we recoil? No. We should respond with the gift that Jesus has given us to battle Satan. That is the mother co-redemptrix. You see, co-redemptrix, and I must say there's been, in the last week, there's been articles throughout the world with beautiful articulations of Simply the fact that Our Lady's role, her subordinate role with and under Jesus in the historic uh, accomplishment of redemption, that is simply Catholic, essential, Catholic, perennial Catholic teachings. So there's been a number of beautiful articles articulating that the Mary Corrientrix title is a legitimate part of our tradition, which which is 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 a very positive contribution. But what some of them are not articulating is why not only is Mary Corrientrix legitimate, why is it needed and needed right now? Why do we need a solemn acknowledgement, a solemn proclaiming of Our Lady at this time when Satan is being proclaimed by the world in, in such obvious external ways? Well, let's talk about why we want to release Our Lady, the co redemptrix with and under Jesus to enter the battle with the full force, because she is the predicted participant. She will crush your head, and she's the predicted winner. This is Genesis 3.15. It's Our Lady who battles both the serpent in Genesis 3.15, the beginning of the Bible, and the dragon in Revelations 12. So the bookends of Scripture bespeak this great battle between God's greatest creature and God's most heinous creature. But we as the church have to at least proclaim the mother and her real role in the redemption as much as the world seems to be proclaiming the power of Satan. And of course, we should be doing better. We should be doing more than the world in its proclamation, which comes from hell. First and foremost, to proclaim, to solemnly define Our Lady as the Corredemptrix, will bring the topic of redemption back to global thought. We have to be realistic about where we are right now. At least much of the Western world no longer considers the redemption, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, to be relevant. It's not part of the the global discussion. It's fading away. Now, one way to return that to global discussion, to worldwide dialogue, is to proclaim the role of Mary in participating with Jesus, the only divine redeemer in the great work of the redemption. It has to lead to Jesus because everything of Our Lady 
leads to Jesus in the right sense. You know, it's interesting that it's very true that Mary takes nothing away from Jesus, nor would she ever want to. It's also true that Jesus takes nothing away from Mary. Why? Because it's God who gave her these roles, the role, the gift of being the Immaculate Conception, that the Father gave her this in, mer- in view of the merits of Jesus so that she could be the principal creature against Satan because she's free from sin. She has no rebellion. And she was created immaculate to be the perfect partner with Jesus, human partner with Jesus in the redemption. She's the mother of God. This is a role that God gave her and she responded to it. And it is her task to not only give birth to the Redeemer as the human co-redemptrix, but to suffer with the Redeemer unto the cross. These are God-given gifts. Jesus is the last one who would want to take away the gifts and roles of Our Lady. And we have to join Jesus in rejoicing in the graces and the roles that God has given to Our Lady, especially now. So to pronounce, to proclaim Our Lady in her role as human co-redemptrix would return the global discussion to the issue of redemption, which we so desperately need. Secondly, we're in the in the midst of, for many of us, unprecedented suffering, certainly on the global scene, for, for a variety of ways. Mary co-redemptrix, to proclaim that truth, is to say to the world, suffering is redemptive. Suffering has a value. Don't ponder euthanasia. Don't ponder uh, suicide. Ponder uniting your sufferings with the sufferings of Jesus along with Mary, and let them save souls. This is Colossians 1.24. We are called to make up what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. That's St. Paul to all of us. That's why St. John Paul II said, we are to be co-redeemers for humanity, April 5th, 1981. That's why Pope Benedict says, we must become redeemers in the Redeemer, May 13th, 2010 at Fatima. This is a essential Christian responsibility. Because St. Augustine's right. God creates us without us, but he cannot save us without us. We have to cooperate in our own redemption, but it doesn't stop there. We're called to participate in the redeeming of others through our prayers, through our sacrifices, through our sufferings, united with Jesus, the only divine redeemer and our lady co-redemptrix. And thirdly, We need to proclaim the full truth about Our Lady because this releases the woman clothed with the sun to do full battle with the dragon. Mary co-redemptrix will crush the holy and all other manifestations of Satan publicly now if we let her. But it's up to us. God has will that he will respect the greatest gift he's given us, which is our freedom on the natural level, which leads to being able to use that for faith when we do it right. And remember, Scripture tells us how much Jesus wants the truth proclaimed. Look at Peter. Go to Matthew 16, 15 to 20. Jesus wants to hear from Peter who he is. Who do they say I am? And at that point, he's Simon, right? Jesus And uh, Simon says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then... And only then does Jesus reward this profession, this public profession of faith in Jesus by giving us the papacy. And my friends, we're at the same point now. I believe Jesus wants the public proclaiming of the truth about his mother, that she is the co-redemptrix, she is the mediatrix of all graces, she is the advocate, so that she can fully exercise those roles in a way that will lead to the Fatima promised triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So my friends, during this Holy Week, let us remember to pray in reparation for the evil blasphemous movie, The Holy. Reparation to Our Lady and and to mitigate its effects. Let us also pray, especially as we walk the walk of Holy Week, let's do it with Our Lady. How did she experience the betrayal of Judas when one son betrayed another son? How did she experience tomorrow when the Eucharist is given so that she could receive the body and blood of Jesus because she was the first one to give Jesus his body and blood? 
and especially on Friday. Let us, let, us, let us see the crucifixion through the eyes and the heart of the co-redemptrix, who, as St. John Paul II says, was spiritually crucified with her crucified son, and her role as co-redemptrix did not cease with the glorification of her son. It continues today because we need it. We need the co-redemptrix to battle the wiles of Satan. So please pray for the fifth Marian dogma. Once again, many articles this last week have come out not only articulating the legitimacy of the title, which of course is simply Catholic teaching, uh, but many of uh, which ending with a call to pray for the fifth Marian dogma. Please do that. Please pray. And I ask especially during this year of St. Joseph, please pray to St. Joseph that he who defended his spouse, our mother, that he would intercede powerfully during this year to prepare the way for the fifth Marian dogma. So let's close by praying the prayer of the Lady of All Nations, the pray, prayer that has been uh, approved by the Vatican, the local bishop, uh, which really calls for us to pray and ask the Spirit to be sent to prevent degeneration, which is happening right now in an unprecedented fashion, disasters and war, and ultimately leading to a proclamation of dogma and an era of peace. So let us pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disasters, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. Saint Joseph, patron of the Church, pray for the fifth Marian dogma. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, I wish you a very blessed Triduum and an extraordinarily graced Easter. God bless you all.